in 2020 two young women from portugal watched the movie dexter which is based on a serial killer and it motivated them to act on what they had seen so they got a hold of the boyfriend of one of them tied him to a chair and began to take him apart piece by piece in a crime that disgusted the entire portugal you want to hear the rest of the case right why haven't you subscribed yet what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up so youtube can suggest it to other viewers then we can proceed to portugal to look into the case of diogo goncalves Diogo Goncalves was born in 1999 in Abufera, which is a coastal city in the Algarve region of southern Portugal. People who knew him said that he loved family and he was a very humble and kind individual. Diogo's upbringing was not ideal as he came from a poor background. When he was about 17 years old, his father suffered a massive stroke and he never recovered from it. Eventually, he slipped into a vegetative state and young Diogo and his mother were saddled with the responsibility of taking care of him, you know. So as he grew, his experiences, his difficult lifestyle shaped him into a focused man that stuck to routines and he did his very best to better himself. He studied hard so that at least he could get a well-paying job to take care of himself and his family. But even being a student was hard for Diogo as he found it difficult to pay his school fees. Instead of dropping out, he just found ways to make money. Diogo did every menial job you can think of to pay for his fees, and eventually he did graduate in flying colors. It was about this time that tragedy unfortunately struck again. His mother, who was his cheerleader and his backbone, in fact his everything, whom he had been studying so hard so he could better her life, got knocked down and killed by a vehicle one fateful morning in 2016 when she was on her way to the city center where she worked as a maid. It was a hit and run and the driver never stopped to check on her or take her to the hospital. She was just left laying there on the road until she succumbed to her injuries. Diogo's mother passing away was really difficult for him. As a result, he went through a period where he was just lost and didn't feel the need to try to move on, but eventually he did, thank goodness. He moved to go and stay with one of his aunts for a bit, but the two of them didn't get along. Diogo was still going through stuff. He wasn't over his mother's demise, but his auntie didn't understand and expected him to be at his very best, so they were always at loggerheads. But eventually, Diogo decided to leave his auntie's house and rent a room at one of his friend's parents' house. He was more happy at his new place because his landlord, who are the parents of his best friend, treated him nicely and like family and he had his own space to himself. Right about this time, Diogo also nailed a job. It's like things were going on the up and up for him. His new job was at a hotel, a five-star hotel called Villa Vita Resort as an IT technician. He loved it there and put all his heart and soul into it. It was also here at the hotel that Diogo met a 19 years old security guard called Maria Marvero. Maria was a young, beautiful woman who shared a similar background story as Diogo. She was also from a poor background. Maria's father was never in the picture. Since she was just a child, he was never there. So she didn't even know who he was. And her mother, she had a lot of um, you know, mental health issues that made her rely totally on young Maria. People who knew Maria said she was level-headed and calm. She was a fan of martial arts, so from time to time she would go practice the arts. Maria's ultimate dream was to become a police officer, but that dream could never come through because the police academy would not admit her because of her obvious tattoos. When Diogo and Maria's path crossed, Diogo was instantly smitten with a nice-looking young security guard. Everyone noticed Diogo really, really liked Maria, including Maria herself. 
she wasn't into Diego according to her but she didn't exactly you know turn him down either she didn't come out straight to like tell Diego straight up yo man I'm not just that into you so can we just be friends no she led him on and Paul Diego thought they were in a relationship and he was doing everything that a boyfriend would do for Maria Maria would tell people that Diego and her were just friends, but on the flip side, Diego would tell the same friends that he and Maria were an item. So it was just kind of confusing, you know. When they told Maria to be straight with Diego, she goes and tells him instead that she likes him. But because she just got out of a toxic relationship, she wouldn't just want to jump into another relationship just yet. So Diego should give her time to heal. And Diego blinded by love believed her and this was what he would tell anyone who asked him what he was doing with maria it's really sad that maria was toiling with diego's emotions like what she was doing was just not right knowing fully well she didn't like him like that diego on his part loved maria so much he could do anything for her including later on turning down a very good paying job in the nearby city of Lisbon when his friend's family he had lived with were moving to Lisbon just so he could be around Maria. That was his sole reason for not wanting to go with them. He was always, I mean, always around Maria, like I said, doing everything a boyfriend should do, every boyfriend duty, except getting intimate because he was waiting for Maria to heal from her emotional pains before they began to get intimate. But in the meantime, he takes her out, buys her stuff, and just dotes on her. Diogo could never visit Maria at her home. This was one strange thing. And it was because Maria told him that she lived with a friend of hers who had a super jealous boyfriend that didn't want another man around. So he believed her and never went looking for her at her place. One day, Diego comes across this video of Maria kissing another girl on Facebook and he did a double take like, what the world is going on? Was this why she kept giving him the cold treatment even though they were in a relationship? Could it be that she was not into boys? Apparently, she liked girls according to this video that he had seen. He took his concerns to his best friend and confident Fabio. Fabio tried to calm him down by telling him how it was just a girl thing for girls to kiss their friends on the lips. Well, Fabio, that's not always true. But after this, Diogo felt better after talking with Fabio and he said he would have a conversation with Maria about it. It's not clear if he did have that conversation or not, but seeing that they still remain friends or in this situation, what can assume he either did and Maria convinced him she wasn't into girls or he just let it be after speaking with Fabio. So fast forward to 2019, Diogo got compensated by an insurance company for the hit and run and eventual demise of his mother back in 2016. Remember I spoke of that earlier. And he was paid the total sum of 70,000 euros, which is, I think it's about 109,000 US dollars, give or take. Diogo had not had this amount ever, I mean ever in his life. So he just let it sit there in his account to marinate for a while so he can figure out what to do with it that will be productive. So in 2020, Diogo, now 21 years old, thought about what his immediate need was. At least let him sort that out first, then every other thing will follow. So he decided, you know, I'm going to buy me a house so I will not have to pay rent anymore. I mean, accommodation has always been his biggest challenge as an adult. So Diogo went to Maria with his plans. He told her everything about the 70,000 euros he had gotten and what he planned to do with it. Listen, shortly after Diego tells Maria about the money, she suspiciously resigned from her job. Her excuse was that she needed time to take care of her mentally ill mother. But she told another friend of hers that she was just tired of working at the hotel because of people's attitude and the way they treated her and constantly questioned her about her relationship with Diego. She didn't think of all of this. I mean, none of this that had been going on according to her bothered her until Diogo got 70,000 euros. How suspicious. Eventually, it turned out that Maria was a big liar after all. And the true reason why she resigned as a security guard in that hotel was far darker and horrific than anyone would have imagined. So it turns out that Maria was actually in a long-term relationship with a woman who was four years older. 
a 23 years old woman called Mariana Fonseca. And her leaving her job at the hotel was just the beginning of a larger plan that would involve Diogo. So Maria and Mariana's relationship have been going strong for more than one year and they actually lived together as a couple in Maria's parents' house. So you see why she lied about having a friend who had a jealous boyfriend. They didn't have much, so they only depended on what Maria earned from her job as a security guard and the small money Mariana earned working at a local hospital, I think it's called Hospital de Lagos, as a nurse. They hoped that someday they will be able to make enough money to rent or buy their own apartment and better their lives. Then comes Diego with the news that he had been awarded 70,000 euros. He was happy telling his supposed girlfriend that he was going to buy a house, something that Maria herself wanted for her and her girlfriend. Unknown to him, Maria was as unstable as her mother, just that she hadn't manifested yet. So telling her that information was going to cost him his life. So Maria and Mariana decided together that they needed Diogo's money more than he did and they devised a way of getting their money at all costs. But before they put their plan in gear, these evil sick girls sat together and watched the movie Dexter. This movie is based on a serial killer who dismembers his victim's bodies in order to dispose of them more discreetly. I wouldn't want to go into details about this movie. You can go check it up yourself. But the things that were done in this movie was what motivated Maria and Mariana to make their move. Fast forward to March of 2020. One day, Diogo woke up extremely excited. That was because that day was a special day. He went to work and made plans with his colleague to switch shifts with him because he had a date with his girlfriend, Maria. According to this colleague of his, Diego that day was all excited and acting nervous at the same time. So they agreed he would cover up for Diogo. Meanwhile, on that day, Diogo met with his best friend's mother. Remember, I mentioned earlier that they were moving out of Algarve to Lisbon after staying in the region for more than six years or so. So he just wanted to say his goodbyes. She told Diogo to come with them because they had a job for him in Lisbon, but he declined. He wanted to stay close to Maria, and that would be the last time she would see Diogo alive. Diogo and Maria had made plans to meet at his home near the Algarve town of Lagos for lunch. He was going to be cooking while she was bringing the drinks. The two met and they ate together. Maria pours out tea for Diogo after the meal. What he didn't know was that she had laced it with sleeping pills that Mariana, her girlfriend, had stolen from the hospital where she worked. After Diogo drinks the tea, Maria began to throw herself all over him like she was ready for them to get intimate on that day. Diogo, who had been waiting patiently all this while, was so excited. He felt like at long last the wait was worth it. Maria moves Diogo to a chair in the middle of his room and ties him to it and she blindfolds him as if she wanted to give him a lap dance. She told Diogo he was going to get the time of his life. Meanwhile, she was just stalling for the medication to kick in but he said it wasn't working fast enough. So impatient, Maria switched to plan B. All the while Maria was inside that room, her girlfriend Mariana was actually waiting in a car parked outside the residence. So Maria calls her to come inside. Diogo at this point says something was amiss, but he could not do anything. He told the girls to lose him and remove the blindfolds, but they refused. He began to panic and became increasingly agitated and this infuriated Maria, who tried to choke him so he could be quiet. Diogo fought back. He was all tied up and blindfolded, but he wasn't going to go out without fighting. When he lost consciousness, Mariana, being a nurse, tried to revive him. But after he came to, Maria pounced on him again. Unfortunately, in his condition, being tied up and restrained, he was no match for the security guard who practiced martial arts, so Maria strangled him. Now that he was gone, they too, Maria and Mariana, began to ransack Diogo's place looking for his bank details so they could assess the money in his account. After a long time of searching, they eventually found Diogo's pin written down somewhere. They attempted to withdraw all the money, but that wasn't going to be possible because Diogo's bank only allows the withdrawal of 400 euros maximum. So instead, they decided to use Diogo's cell phone to make a transfer to Mariana's account. 
To do this, they needed Diego's thumbprint. So what did these two witches do? Just like they saw in the movie Dexter, this woman cut Diego's thumb off so they could use it to unlock his cell phone and it worked. Even they themselves, they said that they were surprised it actually worked like they saw in the movies. After this, they transferred the money to Mariana's account. Then they decided what to do with Diego's body. These two women loaded the body into the car and drove to their home where they began to dismember Diego in their garage using a sharp kitchen utensil that Maria herself had stolen from a supermarket. Maria would later say she wanted to remove his teeth so that he would not be easily identified but he had passed away tongue in teeth so that wasn't possible. You can imagine what a 19 year old female is thinking in her head like how twisted was her mind. Well, after this, they then packed up the cut parts into garbage bags and took it to Diogo's Mercedes and dumped it in the truck. Then they drove off to go spend the money they just took Diogo's life for. They just went squandering Diogo's money, going shopping, buying stuff and treating themselves to nice things. They didn't care that Diogo's room where they had hurt him was all full of forensic evidence. They were just drunk on their new ill-gotten money, you know. You might expect that at least this should be the end to their evil activities, right? Nah. It didn't just stop there. They still carried along with them Diogo's thumb and his cell phone. Their intentions were to gain access into his social media accounts and deactivate all of them. In their bid to cover their trial, they sent messages to Diogo's colleagues and friends, as Diogo of course, saying that he was no longer coming back, that he met a girl he likes and he was moving to France to be with her. When Diogo's direct boss got this message, he was stunned. This wasn't like the Diogo he knew. The Diogo he knew wasn't spontaneous at all. It took him time to think things through before attempting them. Also, at the time, the hotel was closing up because um, the area was going on lockdown due to the increase in cases of you know what. So he needed Diogo's attention at work to put things in place before they closed. So he decided, you know what, I'm just going to call Diogo and talk to him to come in and also let him make me understand why he was making such an irrational decision. So he calls Diogo's cell phone multiple times, but he calls were all declined. Instead, he got a message from Diogo telling him that he couldn't talk on phone, that they should communicate via text messages only. When Diogo's boss sent back a message saying he wasn't going to talk to Diogo by text, it must be by phone call, he never gets a reply back. Two days after taking Diogo's life, these two now decided to get rid of the body that they had cut up. By now they understood that no one was buying the whole moving to France story they as Diogo were trying to spin. Maria drove Diogo's car with his body parts in the trunk towards a village in Agur called Sagras. Mariana was falling right behind her in their own car. When they got to their destination, they took through the garbage bags with Diogo's body in them, along with his cell phone over a cliff that is overlooking the sea near Cabo de San Vicente. Then they drove his car to a remote area and abandoned it there. They thought that by parking Diego's car where they did, if the body parts were found down the cliff, people would assume he had thrown himself over the cliff in a bit to, you know, maybe like hurt himself. They then went to another area in Pego do Inferno near the town of Agev in Tavira and they threw away the other parts that they did not throw down the cliff which includes the head in a well-known beauty spot where it was eventually found out by a French couple on vacation. It didn't take long for people to discover the ghost vehicle where they dumped it too. The police were called and they began searching the area for the owner of the car and it didn't take them long to you know find body parts under a rock down the cliff but they couldn't be so sure it was diego so they took the parts away for testing and ultimately they found out that the body parts belonged to diego who had been reported missing just days prior when news broke that something like this had happened to diego people who knew him just didn't understand why and how i mean diego wasn't mixed up with the wrong crowd he was a straightforward person who lived life by the book so the police had to investigate to know exactly how diego's body parts got there in the first place it was during the investigation that they found out that diego had been paid seventy thousand euros by an insurance company that alone was enough reason for him to be targeted so they had to dig to know where that money was it was then they discovered that the money had been moved from diogo's account to mariana's account at about the same time they think diogo had died so 
It actually didn't take long for the police to begin to go after Mariana, who in turn pointed them towards Maria. When the police arrested Maria, she told the police that Diogo had assaulted her and abused her repeatedly all the while she worked with him at the hotel and that was why she eventually quit her job because she couldn't take it anymore and that that was why she decided to revenge by taking his life. The police decided to check out this assault story, not to say it justified what Maria and Mariana did, but to know if there was any truth to the story. So they pulled her phone records. It was then that they discovered that Maria was lying. In fact, after she left her job at the hotel, she practically called Diogo every single day. Their relationship was even stronger after she left that job, as they communicated frequently. What no one knew at the time was that Diego was already mad and Maria was just trying to keep him close and unsuspecting until she got hands on his money and did away with him. Now, Maria saying that she wasn't going to get out of this one decided to take all the blame. She told the police that she carried out the crime all by herself, that her girlfriend Mariana was not involved at all. She was trying to take the fall for them both, you know, not knowing that Mariana, her girlfriend, was already spilling her guts and singing like a bear to the police. They hadn't had the time to get that story straight because they were focused on squandering the money that wasn't theirs before they got arrested. So everyone was saying what they wanted, which basically was contradicting the other person. Mariana told the police that Diogo never laid a finger on Maria, talk more of assaulting her. She said even though it was Maria's idea to take Diogo's money, they both did it together. According to her, Maria comes home from work one day and tells her she had found a way for them to become rich. She told her that she was going to take money from an orphan, that the person was all alone without parents. So she laid out the plan and she, Mariana, went along with it. But the initial plan was not to harm Diogo though. They just wanted to tie him up and scare him into releasing his passport, but things got out of hand according to her. In the weeks running up to their trial, Maria and Mariana, while sharing a cell, fell out. So by the time they went on trial, Mariana was ever ready to snitch on Maria. When she was questioned about who did the dismemberment, she said everyone thinks she did it because she's a nurse, but it was Maria who did it, that she only had to search the internet and find out how to cut off her body. Mariana claimed that everything she did was out of love for Maria. Maria corroborated this part. She said Mariana only held the light for her while she carried out the gruesome act in the garage of their home. They say that watching the movie Dexter was what gave them the motivation and the know-how on what to do with the body and how to cover their tracks, but obviously that didn't work out as the plan because they got caught very, very easily. Maria and Mariana were charged to court and there was a mountain of evidence against them. From Diogo's cell phone to their fingerprints all over his apartment to CCTV footage of them at the ATM withdrawing money, prosecutors were able to establish that Maria was guilty but they could not prove the extent of Mariana's participation in the crime. So in April of 2021, after court proceedings on the 27th, Maria was handed 25 years in jail, which is the maximum jail sentence in Portugal. Listen, I do not understand this, that no matter the crime committed, a criminal only gets to spend 25 years in jail. Anyways, Maria was also ordered to pay the sum of 260,000 euros to Diogo's family as compensation, while Mariana got only four years in prison and was ordered to pay 350 euros as compensation to Diogo's family. Mariana's sentence was later committed, so she didn't even have to spend time in jail at all. This decision didn't sit well with the masses. Everyone knew that Mariana was not an innocent bystander. She was a willing participant in this case, in this crime. But there was nothing they could do to change the court's ruling. I may not understand why Portugal would have 25 years as the maximum sentence. There are certain levels of crime that I think should put someone in jail for life. Is 25 years really enough time to pay for taking someone's life? If this crime were to be committed in the US, I bet you this would be life without parole or even capital punishment in some states. And that four years suspended sentence for Mariana, let me just keep my opinion to myself, but let me know what you think about that in the comment section. It will be interesting to know what your take is about this case. On December the 29, 2021, just three days before the new year, 
Mariana was found lifeless in her jail cell hanging from her sheet. Even though an attempt was made at saving her, it was too late. Why do they always take the coward's way out? If you're bold enough to take a life, you're bold enough to bear the consequences. But they will always chicken out and take their own lives. Mariana Fonseca, the one who was acquitted of the crime, wanted to return to her job at Hospital de Lagos, but the administration of the hospital did not allow it. They put her in a disciplinary process for unjustified absences, corresponding to the time she was in prison, and did not pay her salary until she was fired. All I can say is the audacity of her to want to return to work at the hospital. Who would want their family member to be treated by a person like that who had taken someone's life? Maria was only 19 when she committed this crime. It's so scary that, as young as she was, she was so manipulative and inhuman. Throughout the court case, these two didn't show any sign of remorse, nothing. Not even when they were describing how they were taking the body apart, did they show any hint of remorse. It's not every day one sees young women of this age doing stuff like this. So this crime, when it happened, shocked the entire country and made people angry that Mariana didn't get to serve any jail term. All Diego wanted was to love and be loved. He didn't deserve any of what happened to him. Unfortunately, that's the reality of life. People, you know, who are cool don't always last, so to speak. With that said, that's it for today's case, guys. Before you leave, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can, you know, recommend it to other people. So until next video, stay safe.